Today's Cowboys report is made possible by Kinzuri. If you are a short king, if you feel like you're lacking some confidence in your height, their shoes are the ultimate height hack. Tell you more about them later on in today's show, but you can get 15% off on top of up to 30% site-wide discount at Kinzuri.com slash chat and use promo code chat. Some breaking news here moments ago. Dalton Schultz is officially leaving the Dallas Cowboys. He has agreed to a one-year deal with the Houston Texans. It is worth up to $9 million. Now, we probably won't know until tomorrow, maybe later today, sometimes that happens, the nitty-gritty details on the contract, but it is one year's up one year, up to $9 million, likely some incentives. The cap hit won't be 9 The Cowboys, barring some other moves, will end up getting a comp pick to be determined what that comp pick ends up looking like if it's canceled out by signing somebody else. But look, the Cowboys had moved on from Schultz. The market was not what he wanted. And the fact that the... The situation involving Schultz had not changed, that the Cowboys had had interest in just moving on to the tight end position. All of those things made it a little bit more and more unlikely that they weren't going to bring him back. Because he spent and was unsigned for so long, I think it gave the, ch the chance, the possibility of a potential Schultz reunion. But I think at some level, the, the Cowboys themselves had moved on from the grouping. And look, they could have done one year $9 million if they wanted to. They did not want to do that in the end. They, they, they chose to move on, look at other tight ends. It is now the, the Peyton Hendershot, the, the Jake Ferguson grouping at tight end. And potentially a draft pick by the way, as well, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. In the end, Schultz didn't get what he wanted. He wanted more money. He didn't find it. He settles for a one-year prove-it-ish deal with, in theory, a new rookie quarterback. He should be a decent safety valve for Houston. The Texans want to be the Cowboys so bad. They're signing all of our players, Noah Brown. They're giving us their good ones and Brandon Cooks, and they're still taking our logo and putting it in theirs. Give me your one-word reaction to losing Dalton Schultz. This will be the pinned comment on today's video, so sound off for me in the comment section, especially if the ad break comes here on YouTube. My one word is expected. Again, the chance was there that he comes back on a cheaper one-year deal. Up to $9 million, the Cowboys could have afforded. I think in terms of like, we're, we're going to ride with Ferguson, we're going to ride with Hendershot, probably draft somebody too. We don't need to commit big money to a good but not elite tight end. It's a fine deal for Houston, but for Dallas, I think they were moving on from that standpoint. Here are the top free agent tight ends. We want to talk some Dalton Schultz replacements here. Cameron Brait. He was cut by the Bucks. Austin Hooper, I kind of think, is a similar player to uh, the, the Dalton Schultz who just lost. Irv Smith Jr., producer Patrick's guy. Foster Moreau, I think, is the best tight end left out there. Drew Sample, former second-round pick. I don't love the free agent market at tight end. The draft grouping, though, I am much more interested in. Michael Mayer, I think it's, I have him as the best tight end this year. He's an inline tight end. The Jason Witten style can block, can catch. Not an elite athlete. Dalton Kincaid is a very impressive pass catcher. Uh, if you want the pass catcher, take Kincaid. Darnell Washington is a freak in size and speed and athletic ability. He blocks like a tackle, needs work as an overall pass catcher. Man, the upside's appealing there. Luke Musgrave, a fantastic athlete, but a small sample size with red flags of injuries and drops and blocking kind of scares me there. In most draft classes, Sam Laporta might be tight end two. Uh, I think they could make an argument he's tight end two. He, he might be tight end three or four for me when it's all said and done. Round two, great pick. Tucker Craft, South Dakota State. Luke Schoonmaker is a really great athlete out of Michigan. Got other guys like Davis Allen, Cameron Latu, Zach Koontz at, an, at, a, at an Old Dominion. It is a great tight end class. I am totally on board just drafting one in round one, two, three, four, whatever, and making that your inevitable Dalton Schultz replacement. Today's Cowboys report is sponsored by Kinzuri. If you're tired of feeling in insecure about your height, Kinzuri makes shoes gonna up to 2.8 inches to your height discreetly. Women get heels, makeup, push-up bras, so why can't men get a confidence boost too? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Kinzuri should not only hate boosting, but stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes. 
fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack. For a limited time, Kinzuri is offering our viewers an exclusive discount up to 15% on top of their up to 30% site-wide discount. So use code CHAT, C-H-A-T, at Kinzuri.com slash chat slash chat to get your 45% off. Don't wait any longer. Upgrade your shoe game and confidence now at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I dot com slash chat. If you want to get high, put on a pair of Kinzuri's. Links in the comment section and the description of today's show. It's Kinzuri.com slash chat. Time for some free agency. More news here. The Cowboys have three players in for visits today. That is on Monday, March 20th. Ronald Jones, the former Chiefs and Bucks back. Chuma Adoga, the Jets offensive lineman. Former Jets and Falcons offensive lineman, I should say. Traven Howard, the former Rams linebacker. These would be what I would call their, their, their Trojan signings. They, they are protection just in case something doesn't go the way you planned it to go. Uh, from that standpoint, these are we don't these guys might not even get a, a roster or contract that guarantees them a roster spot. It could be a one year vet men for 25 percent guaranteed, making them cuttable if they need to be during the actual uh, preseason training camp. It just means you don't have to take a premium player in the first couple of rounds. But if the board falls the way you want it to. It doesn't stop you from taking that type of player. It's it's the protection signing there. Ronald Jones flashed in 2020. I was a big fan of his game coming out of USC. He had the explosiveness that, that I loved and then quickly fell out of favor again in Tampa and barely played at all for the Chiefs. He would not cost you very much money. Chuma Dogu, the Cowboys had been briefly linked to when the Tyron Smith injury happened as a Maybe trade target at various points throughout. Uh, Adoga in for a visit. Not the best career stats, but he's played all over the offensive line. I wouldn't call him your sixth offensive lineman, but if he's like your seventh or eighth lineman, maybe ninth too, then it starts to make some sense. Traven Howard briefly overlapped with Bones Fossil in Los Angeles as a predominantly special teamer. And with Luke Gifford now a free agent, there's your... Jabril Cox, Devin Harper, bonus insurance. Uh, in the event that they sign, you know, we'll, we'll see what the contracts look like for their uh, roster spot being guaranteed there. But name a player who you want to sign in NFL free agency. Maybe it's a bigger name than three admittedly lesser names from that standpoint. Sound off for me in the comment section. While you're down there, make sure you guys are subscribed. When the Cowboys make moves, we make the news videos hit that sub button for free ones multiple times per day you got three today including the live probably two tomorrow two throughout the week there don't miss out on anything cowboys related youtube.com slash at cowboys tv i did want to probably for the last time briefly mention the odell beckham situation uh the cowboys of course have long been linked to uh, Odell Beckham, the signing of Brandon Cook, or the trade, I should say, excuse me, the trade for Brandon Cooks, my bad, uh, basically takes the Cowboys out of the running. You're, you're not going to pay OBJ and be paying Brandon Cooks and got Gallup and got Lamb. That just isn't, unless there's an injury to somebody, knock on wood, that's not going to be a path that they end up pursuing there. So all of the OBJ drama appears over. And with what you have at wide receiver, outside of a draft pick, you know, maybe you re-sign T.Y. Hilton to a cheap one-year deal. Let him compete for the wide receiver four role alongside a guy like a Jalen Tolbert, a Kevante Turpin. I think if you do re-sign Hilton, it puts Simi Fihoko in kind of a dangerous spot roster-wise. You could still draft somebody if the right guy falls to you, but now you don't have to take a wide receiver early on, especially if you end up do re-signing Hilton, which we'll see on that standpoint there. In the end, I like trading for Cooks over signing Odell Beckham. I think Cook's the safer player, as weird as that might sound with the concussion history and the down year. But he's going from Davis Mills and Kyle Allen and Jeff Driscoll to Dak Prescott. That is a massive upgrade at the quarterback spot for Brandon Cooks. Time for some other Cowboys free agency updates. Dante Fowler 
and Jonathan Hankins are on the Cowboys list per da uh, the Dallas Morning News of players they would like to re-sign. I am curious what Dante Fowler and or Hankins would end up commanding on the open market. Fowler did have six sacks last year. Really cooled off down the stretch, just like Dorrance Armstrong did. Um, Hankins was a big boost for you on the defensive line as a run stopper. I'm down to bring them back as long as the cost is appropriate. That's especially more for Fowler. I think $3 million max for me because he's going to be my number four or five edge. I can find that guy pretty cheaply elsewhere and or in the draft. One more news item, Jake McQuaid is gone. The long snapper who had been here for two years got hurt this year. Uh, is now a member of the Detroit Lions. They have signed him. Matt Overton is a free agent, by the way. Keep note of that one. He could come back. And Todd Archer also mentioned Trent Sieg, who had been recently released by the Raiders as a possible long snapper candidate. Remember the rules of long snapper. We discuss you when you sign, when you make the roster, and then never again in the season or something probably went terribly wrong. 